Uh, we might. Uh, we might. Seems good. Veldak, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. As is light, indeed. Um, I think I just finally managed to remember that I was going to put these speed modules... Uh, if, I was actually maybe going to put them all in this one. But... Maybe I should put them in the beacon instead for the auto crafter. Twisty P, Glacier Wolf, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And apparently we're auto saving uh, a minute after loading our game. Cool, cool, cool. The save's getting a bit long because I haven't yet been able to trim surfaces on a few planets that I've had to scan. Gotta love that, indeed. Um, I think it often tends to end up being the one machine that's got lots of stuff to do. Um, so I'll just put a bunch of speed modules in the first one, I think. I have watched all the previous episodes from the beginning. I've caught up. Wow. Uh, thank you. <laughs> glad you glad you've enjoyed them. Um, so where are we up to now? Let's see. Oh yeah, uh, there was something important that I need to add to our dispatching system. Um, I've only simulated this in Meatware, which is to say I've thought it through. But I'm pretty sure the dispatch system I've built... Excuse me, my voice is still warming up. Welcome, welcome, Fraser K. Good to see you again. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a flaw in this system, which uh, I wasn't expecting the use case to be a problem uh, for a while. And that is, we're actually able to get more core fragments than we're able to consume. Um, I did get every single... Uh, I think I got every single core seam tapped on this very small planet here. Um, on Corsal, radius 972, we have uh, 13 drills times 2.3073 for just under 30 core fragments per second for Immersite Cave. Uh, off stream, I've gone and done the same thing for Stromhurst. Well, I haven't... Uh, I haven't tapped every single drill because it's a significantly larger planet and I want to, once I find the last damn worm on this planet, uh, I want to trim surface down, just keep the save file a little bit smaller, keep the, I don't know how much it affects UPS, just having a large area explored, I don't think it does much at all. Um, but in any case, even though we've got plenty of electricity to spare um, coming down from the core mining drill. Uh, oh, sorry, from the space elevator. Um, the thing is, each new drill is doing very little individually. Uh, we have on this planet 17, oh, 18 drills already. And it's actually getting a little bit less uh, iridite core fragments, about two per second less than what we were getting out of our 13 drills on a much smaller moon for core sol, for Immersite Cave core fragments. Uh, suffice to say, iridite is much slower, but also, uh, more to the point, I'm getting a lot more Immersite Cave core fragments than I expected already. And back on Hagen, um, I've actually just got this one block that can process... I actually just doubled it recently. Um, oh yeah, that's right. I was bringing the construction train here because we only ever have vanilla trains drop off here. I had to change it so that it works with uh, train limits. Why is this train limit zero? Oh. Um... That should be a one. Train limit one. Fantastic. 
Um, but yeah. Uh, we've actually... Uh, the train's going to go to the wrong side now. It's fine. Uh, we actually only had 24 core fragments per second that we were able to process before. Um, and unless we scrap literally everything, if it gets full eventually, um, including uh, raw imasite, which it would take a long time to get to, but the point is... Uh, this could back up eventually, which is one use case I didn't account for yet. Um, so if we end up with uh, ships going to that outpost over and over again, because it produces core fragments very quickly, um, and it's like, pretty much as soon as one ship leaves, it's got this full again. Because we've got, like, multiple train loads of core fragments be waiting to be... to replace this lot once it's picked up. Um, for one thing, we're going to need an awful lot of ships to end up sending ships to other destinations. Well, maybe not that many, but more importantly... Um... When enough, when enough ships come back here and fill this whole thing up, uh, when we're totally saturated on Immersite Cave Core Fragments, we're still going to be dispatching ships to pick up Immersite Cave Core Fragments. Um, and obviously, we could eventually end up with pretty much all of our ships queuing to drop off here uh, and not going to get some fragments that we actually need. So I had a little think about how we could patch this in with a minimum of fuss. Um, the layout of the combinators that we've already got being the real challenge here. And I think what I uh, the best solution I've come up with is simply this. I don't know where I'm going to put this thing. I want to put it down with the other... Uh, the other transmitters, but it's going to look slightly out of place. This needs to have room for expansion in case we have more outposts for Immersite Cave Core Fragments. Um, so we can distinguish which one we're looking at. Um, but basically, at the drop-off, I'm going to check are uh, our requester chests full? If so, we're going to send a signal on to... Uh, the central clock channel, just because that's one that we've already got in use that we can that we can make use of. Um, back at the outposts, they've already got uh, one satellite dish. These are rather big, although they only use two megawatt. Um, but we've already got the one satellite dish uh, hooked up to that channel. So basically what I'm going to do is, um, I could probably add another combinator right here, even. I might even be able to use the green, uh, the green wire channel. Uh, basically, if, uh, Immersite Cave Core Fragments are full at the drop-off, we're going to send a signal on this channel that says like Immersite Cave Core Fragment and we'll add a decider over here that probably just says uh, if Immersite Cave Core Fragment equals zero output time input count pass it through to here um, and that's it because here time would have to be greater than or equal to zero um, yeah, none of these outposts are going to work with a... are going to send anything if they're not receiving a time signal. They're already set up that way. So we're going to have to go to each outpost and add one decider combinator. Um, which isn't a whole lot, of course. Where does that go? Yeah, that makes sense. 
Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Um, and at our drop-offs, we're just gonna have to add a transmitter. Maybe I'll put it up here. Because it's not really part of any of this logic. I, I feel like this is a bit clearer, if that makes sense. There isn't really a cozy spot to put it down here anyway. Alright, so maybe about here. Let's go over there. I added a L LTN train, sorry, non-LTN train. Uh, with the space train stuff here for vanilla drop-offs back to the mall. Comes in very handy for a personal taxi. Let's park ourselves right about here. Um, and we'll go and do that. Can always just add more ships. Uh, well, no, that's the thing. We could end up with all of our ships queuing up to drop off at the one resource, theoretically, eventually. Philip B, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Especially if we're sat saturated on the one resource because all of the other resources aren't moving. I suppose I could just check if this chest is full. Because if that chest is full, we can pretty much assume all of them are. Okay, so we're going to put in a decider combinator. Whoops, whoops, whoops. What, what, there we go. And how much can we fit in here? Uh, 96 stacks times 20. 1920. Alright, so if Core Fragment Imazite Cave is equal to 1920... Oh, here we go. Uh, I don't think we're going to see it fill up, though, right now. Um, but yeah, I'll just double-check. This one should be full. Oh, no, it's not. Not even close. You know, that, that'll fill up in a moment. No, I think 1920 is right. 96 times 20. 1920. I'm going to be absolutely sure if I'm going to do a precise... Uh, precise condition here. Alright, so... Immersite Cave Core Fragment. Output 1. Doesn't matter if it's 1 or any other number for that matter. And this is going to be on the central clock channel. Might call it something else for clarity's sake. And now if we go check on our outpost. Uh, our outpost. We should see... I missed it already. <laughs> it was too slow. Uh, let's just check that it works. Four fragments go in here. And... Uh, why don't I see it? Central clock. What are we missing? Central clock channel. Oh, blur. Well, let's just say greater than zero for a second. Uh, yes. Okay, cool. That is connected. So equal to one nine two zero. And now we need to go to the outposts, because I don't think we have, like, a 
combinator and some construction bots lying around, unfortunately. Yeah, we don't. So I'm just going to put a decider in here to say that that number has to be equal to zero. If so, pass through the time signal. And without the time signal, we won't be sending anything back to dispatch. Without sending anything back to dispatch, we won't be requesting any ships. Cool. Um, it's a pretty short trip, but I will have to physically go over there. Oh, why don't I take some artillery? Because um, I noticed, unless I miscalculated when I was messing around with the artillery ships, um, they should be able to reach across most of that small planet. I've actually got three artillery turrets here, but no ammo. Artiller... I don't have any ammo up here either. I'm pretty sure we can't prod module artillery shells or anything in, under the military equipment. Um, category for that matter. Can I make the RT shells in the orbital base? Let's see. Um, explosives, plastic steel, uh, we don't have explosives up here, and I don't think I'm going to be moving explosives into space, at, at scale at any point. Like, we're not going to be doing it for science. Pretty sure. Oh, explosion shielding data. Yes, we are. Cool, cool, cool. Let's do that now, and then I'll bring explosives to the mole, and I'll probably automate RD shells in the space mole. Um... So I have some space here. Let's make this one explosives. Explosives. Stack density of shells is awful though. It's a lot less bad in K2. Your game is barking. I'm sorry you could hear that. Uh, you know, normally when I hear something in the background uh, and I say sorry if you can hear that, People say, no, we couldn't hear a thing. Um, I guess dogs are the exception. Were those your puppers? No. And there they go again. Uh, I'm going to have to play with the mute button a lot more today. Fat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Can you see the dogs? No, they're not my dogs. So this is explosives. This is explosives. I think I've already set that up correctly. Wait. Oh, for a second I thought this was explosives. It's actually kind of similar with the graphic. Um, I need to go and make... I think I've got the stuff all up here, actually. Need to make another space train. Debarking really isn't a problem. It's quiet enough anyway. It's... I, I don't really want it, though. <laughs> bother, bother trying to mute. Indeed it is. But I deal with that all the time with... Super considerate people. Wait, not that many. Wait, not that many. What am I doing? This is... This is a relatively short train that we're making. Um, and then we need 
few of these. A few of those. That goes there, actually. And steal some charged batteries. Okay. I forgot. I think I'll do it this way, actually. I was going to say, I forgot to grab this sh uh, blueprint so that we'd have the schedule. But I can just copy it like this. Honestly, I thought it was the other stream I was watching, <laughs> indeed. Um, alright, so... Explosives. Drop-off is going here. And... Explosives provider on this end. Wait till full cargo. One second in activity. Um, do I need to... I don't think we're ever having trouble keeping up with explosives. Oh, I haven't set this, uh, provide stack threshold correctly yet. Also, I haven't enabled this for short trains at all. Could probably just leave it as is. I, I don't foresee any more problems with that throughput. Um, anyway... And I think because it's going to be easy to keep that saturated, we can probably just leave it to be unconditional for the vanilla train. Play that back to me when this bites me in the butt later on. That's weird. I'm have... Oh, I have no bots. No, I do have bots. I wonder why they didn't pick up that combinator just now. Alright, up we go. Pick up the explosives. I just want to do a lap to make sure this is working. I wonder if... I'm getting little hitches occasionally, and they don't appear to be spaceships landing. Oh, I think it might have been spaceship taking off, actually. It would have been the Chimera, the stolen ship. Alright, in we go. Was that the... That was copper ingots. Cool, cool, cool. And then back into the elevator. Alright, so we now have explosives in the LTUNT network upstairs that benefit from productivity bonuses. Why can't I place this? It's very annoying. There we go. And we can go right ahead and schedule cannon shells and then artillery shells i could do nuclear artillery shells it'd be a bit more of a pain and it's not what i need right now anyway all right i think i'll do a new combinator since i don't really have one for military stuff here And apparently I don't have room for all these construction bots. Oh, they came from the train, didn't they? I wish it wouldn't prioritize the construction bots coming out of the train when it's parked here. There we go. They didn't even empty them. Uh... Okay, so we want cannon shells pretty much only as prerequisites, and let's say like a hundred arty shells. 
And they should be churning out by the time I get up there. I think it emptied them and more just went in at the same time. Yeah, it reached the condition of being empty um, while the bots were still recharging and jumping back into the train. Maybe I should make it like empty plus one second of inactivity. Something like that. Although it's a pretty rare use case. That'll get it reset properly. Now then, cannon shells. We need explosives in here. And we need to whitelist them. And that should do it. Oh, we actually have to request explosives be brought to the mall first. Should be already on its way, even though this light never goes yellow for some reason. I find it interesting that it's a specific uh, it's a specific train stop or train stops that have that bug consistently. But yeah, here comes our train. Hopefully not to squish me. Are they all in the same location on the blueprint? Uh, which blueprint? Cool. So I only requested one artillery shall be made, but... Oh crap, I forgot a step or two. We need to turn that... Oh no. Oh, uh, I set it to cannon shell instead of explosive cannon shell, and it's not a prerequisite. No, <laughs> we made a bunch of cannon shells for no reason. I don't suppose... There's any use for these? Not really, not unless I want to use a tank. Off by one, indeed. One job. Um, but yeah, we only request one cannon shell, but the refresh on setting the recipes is once every, like, 33 seconds. Um, so we're going to keep churning these out. And we just make sure we have some so that we can make the artillery shells. Which actually require four explosive cannon shells. It's very unlikely, but with these settings it could get stuck. If we end up with uh, over a hundred arty shells and like two explosive cannon shells. And I take the arty shells and it tries to make more arty shells. It's not gonna it's not gonna be able to. Actually, no, that's not right, because it would put the explosive cannon shells in uh, the space manufactory. So that wouldn't actually be a problem. Um, sure. Explosive cannon shell. Whoops. I'm just going to reduce that request a little bit. All right, did we get our arty shells? We did already. Storage, artillery turret, and artillery shell. Fantastic. That should be more than enough to clear the last two worms off that planet, right? Um, I don't need all of these life support canisters used up ones at that. 
Uh, let's ride our construction ship back. And... Clear this out first, I guess. Okay. What was our target called again? Uh, I know the name of one of them, but the first one I want to go to... Corsol and then Stromhurst. Corsol Orbit. Should probably check that we've got fuel, considering we're doing a manual launch. But yeah, we'll be there in about seven minutes. I did notice um, with our hauler ships, with the current level of laser damage, uh, they do occasionally take a little bit of damage. I'm pretty sure, at least I strongly suspect, uh, it's only when the uranium fuel is swapped over, actually. Even though I set it to swap as soon as the uh, accumulator charge drops any significant amount. But I added a little something... Um, I added a little something to our drop-off. We drop off some construction bots as well. Or some repair packs, rather. I think I just manually put some construction bots in. Okay. What are we going to do while we are in or out? I wonder. What is missing over here? Storage space. For something that shouldn't be in this robot network. Okay then. How about I grab the constr- oh. Oh, I left it parked here. Sorry about that construction train. We are doing much, much, much better on raw imasite. Naturally. Let's see. Where is it? Raw imasite. Uh, as of about 7.6 hours ago or so, 7.2 hours ago, very, very consistent. None of this up and down nonsense. Very nice. Wait, was that a, was that a random rock? Rocket fragment. Oh, okay. I was going to say I didn't think this was here earlier. Alright, let's grab a construction train before I forget. I'm going to head over here. And we're going to... Uh, remove some... Rail here. So that we can put down a loader, actually. It's going to be a vanilla loader. I'm going to steal uh, these settings. So basically, if there's anything in uh, this container, the return to mall train is going to come and pick it up. And then we're going to put in a filterless uh, storage container. So anything that doesn't belong in this robot network should find its way back here. And get taken back to the mall. Fantastic. Back to the emptier with you. 
And then these bots should find their way back in this general direction. Fantastic. And of course, the train's going to move on before the bots get back, but hopefully that won't pose too much of a problem. That does actually add a couple of stacks to the front. There we go. Oh, we did something productive with our few minutes. We've still got 2 minutes 47 remaining. Um, I do want to update... I guess there's no spaceships in here. I could probably update this blueprint. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, except I need to be absolutely sure that we're not anchoring anywhere while I am in editor mode. Oh, I was still working on this. And I don't really want to make another block with space tiles. Let's, let's chip away at this design that we'd mostly finished. Okay. Well, I wasn't sold on whether I was going to do this in the same block, actually, but probably. What's this? Contaminated bio sludge. Contaminated cosmic water. Output. We were going to do the output on the outside because they don't line up with each other on the inside. So lubricant input... We could do something like this. Um, it's not going to fit if I do it that way. We're going to have to make a little exception. Where we have our beacon. As long as we can still put in our inserters, that should be fine. And we should be able to put these as close together as we like. So we'll have regular inserters. Uh, why don't we do it like this? For the symmetry of it. Need some space belt. And some long arm inserters. I'll just double check, but I'm pretty sure we don't need fast inserters for this. Uh, let's see. Speed modules... Negative uh, 70% power consumption. Individually, we're looking at less than one per second. Or maybe a little bit more than one per second between two different items. I'm sure we'll be fine with one inserter there. Let me just double check I moduled all of those. So we got 12 of these, 81.6, 78.4. I did miss one. Here it is. Beautiful. Um, and then we'll do our outputs over here. Which, solid-wise, there's only the final product. Nice and easy. Um, well, this part will definitely look like this. So we'll just flip that over. Kandar Jr., good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I want to move the junk data cards probably over to the left here. Uh, 
And we'll just have the two final products down here. And one... Uh, what is it? Contaminated bio sludge can go over this way. And the other one over here. Alright, let's see if we're at our destination. We are. Let's anchor in the usual spot. And I'm literally just here to place a decider combinator. Uh, except I'll be going down to the planet to clear the last of the biters as well. If I haven't already. Let's see. We've already confirmed hostile extinction on Corsal. So we can go ahead and trim the surface, even though it's not going to be that much of a trim. Did I have to confirm it? Oh. Oh, I was trying to scan it. Whoops. Trim surface. Confirm. Only took a moment, so we're not removing that much. We're really not removing that much in this instance. But that'll make saving the game just that little bit faster. Alright, so here we're going to say if core fragment imicite cave is equal to zero, output input count time signal. Time signal. And that seems to be working. Fantastic. Now we go and put the same patch onto our second outpost, which very thankfully happens to be right next door. So we're going to Stromhurst Orbit. Really couldn't have asked for much better luck with these two outposts. Um, for two resources that we need the most of, close enough that uh, it's faster than going via the anomaly. Um, obviously being this far from the interstellar map isn't ideal, but in this instance it's still, it's still worth. One of our haulers is coming into Corsal now. And why don't I park here? Oh, hello. Sure, you can have that, I suppose. Maybe that was a reason not to park here. It's fine. Okay. Uh, we do have one extra decide to combinate here already because... This is the second one. It does have to check that time is greater than or equal to something. So Corsal, I think I said I was going to do five ticks per outpost. Uh, output time, if time is less than five. Okay, so first thing we're going to check is time is greater than or equal to five. And time is less than ten. If those two conditions are met, we're going to pass this through. Um, and then we need to add one more decider before we even give it a chance. And that's going to be if core fragment iridite is equal to zero output time signal, which is the one thing that we're getting from this. Cool, cool, cool. I might just leave it like that because that's pretty readable. And I'm not exactly sure how I would reshape these. Uh, actually, oh, I kind of like that better. The wires in the front are a little bit distracting, but other than that, that's actually kind of easier to follow. 
Or I could put these down here. Yeah, that actually makes it a bit clearer, I think. Whether or not we put the time signal through at all is a whole other... Oh, wait a sec. Wait a second. When the ship leaves... S times negative 1 output 0. If time greater than 0, output 0, input count. Hmm, I'm surprised I didn't notice that. The moment that the ship leaves, we do or don't send the signal to, say, negative signal 0, for example, signal 1, whatever outpost it is. Uh, we may or may not send that signal based on the time. But isn't this the one... This is the one thing where we don't have to worry about the time, isn't it? Because we're sending it on the green wire, it's going back to um, this memory cell. And this on the red wire is where we get all of the information for whichever outpost we might send something to. So... I think we can... If time equals zero output... Signal one. If time greater than zero output signal one? What? What? I'm so confused. This is like a memory cell? That has to be a mistake, right? Maybe I connected this by accident? Or didn't realize I was, like, cross-signaling? If time signal equals zero... Output signal one input count. Oh, it holds onto it. Until it's our turn to transmit. No, that does make perfect sense. But we can do one better and just send this whenever we want. Because sending it on the green wire, we don't have to wait our turn. And that's not going to cause problems with, like, not sending a signal if Iridite core fragments back at home are full. Alright then, so in that case, I'm pretty sure we just ignore this. Um, and this part doesn't need to be here at all. And we simply connect green wire here, which looks kind of weird and tacky, so let's put it over this way. Um, so I'm going to have to do the same thing back here. Alright. So that doesn't, that's not a thing anymore. This goes straight to here. Put it over here just for the look of it. And... Oops. And these are irrelevant. Nice. So we actually reduced our combinator count and made things more robust. Um, I haven't gone through and done all the settings uh, for this outpost yet either. Kind of wanted to do that on stream. But first, let's see how much artillery range we have. I didn't expect to find a worm just yet. Um, so using the navsat, 
with the... Oh, that's... That is significantly less range than I was hoping for, actually. I would have to go to so many places to check if there's a worm there. You know what I should have brought? Uh, some stuff for... Oh. Wait, no, we've cleared this with artillery. I should have brought some stuff for, um, weapon delivery systems. That'll find them. There's a really small chance of accidentally damaging our own stuff, but... It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised just how short our artillery range is compared to the planet. I guess I shouldn't be. This is comparable to Nalvis. Well, I, I've i looked before. I don't think I'm going to find... Okay. Fingers crossed we just found the last two worms. Let's -a go. I still forgot to pick up ammo. Where is it? Still pretty far. Down we go. Just missed the uranium. Kellogg's, thank you very much for the seven months. Much appreciated. And a welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Are we in range? Not auto range. Let, let's, let's give him some gratuitous artillery. Fantastic. Uh, thank you again so much, Kellogg's. And this shell is for you. Oh. Well, that was a lot weaker than I was expecting. Have some freaking lasers. Tesla gun. Alright, I don't suppose... That was the last worm? Nope. I think I'll have to find them with weapon delivery cannons. Alright, let's head back. It's time to set up this outpost, and I'm realizing uh, as soon as I do set up this outpost... Ships are going to start coming here, whether we're ready or not. Didn't eat enough Kellogg's, indeed. Asandanima, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, it's not entirely obvious, but I went to the trouble of making this outpost nice and neat as well. Looking somewhat similar to, like, a metro train map. Will they have somewhere to land? By land I mean unload. Not yet they won't. But we're kind of we're kind of far ahead of Erudite for the moment, so it shouldn't be too bad. I could always just set it up so I can remotely activate the last step um, for the station as well. Okay. So, step one is everything that says Core Fragment Cryonite needs to become Core Fragment Erudite. I really shouldn't have landed this in the same robot network. Um, I've already done it here. This needs to be Core Fragment Erudite. What's our address here? 
Uh, automation signal, planet 682. Planet 682. I'll just double check. I'm pretty sure this goes here. Moon orbit 1180. That's home. Okay. So this goes here, but the anchor to target left clamp changes based on what type of core fragment. Uh, we need whatever's on the Immersite Cave 1 plus 3. So that's 14. So let's see. Anchor to target left clamp. Uh, wait, what was this set to? So the target left clamp... But Immersite Cave should be 13. Whoops. I should set up some shortcuts for these. Let's actually do that. Um, in. Uh, what was it called? Something Soul? It's not more Soul, right? Poor soul. Poor soul. I'm pretty bad with names. Icon. I'm just going to say Poor Fragment Immersite Cave. Uh, can I, like, jump to this relatively easily without a hotkey? Apparently. Hold on. No, that's if I'm on the same surface. All pins? There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need to hotkey all of them. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so. It was 13, wasn't it? 12 plus the one that's default on the ship. That's fine. So uh, anchor to target left clamp 1 from here plus 11 equals 12. If that equals 12, push it through. Uh, so this one will be 15. I think. I'm sure managed to make this a little bit confusing. So for a total of 16, 15 plus 1. 14 plus 1 is 15. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. And then... Do I need to go Navsat for this? Shift N shows all pins. Alright. Uh, and over here we had... That is also... That is also the home destination. Moon orbit 1180. Why was it set to 1179? Don't tell me in the testing surface, in the testing save, uh, the home destination was one off what it turned out to be in our main save. I think it did. Literally one off. Okay. Um... So this becomes core fragment iridite, core fragment iridite, core fragment iridite. It would have been pretty difficult to make it more generic, but more importantly, we would need even more combinators. Core fragment iridite, core fragment. You know what I can do as well? Search factory. This surface only. Signal. Core fragment crinite. No? I think it has to be non-zero. So I can't actually find this this way? Or did I remember... 
Did I actually find a way for that to... No, I don't think so. Unfortunate. It would have found, like, this one, for example. Yeah. If the signal is actually present, it finds it. it needs to be an active signal. Yes, indeed. Right, this one as well. And, uh... 1177, isn't that... Nothing in particular? Oh, this is our address here. So, planet orbit... 683. And this is moon orbit 684. Planet orbit... 683. Just double check. Fantastic. Uh, once again, we're not going via the anomaly, so we'll leave that at zero. And we're not going to change anything about how much stuff we're asking for. We've already set it to... Uh, to wait for tick 5 through to tick 9. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yep, that's 5. I'm pretty sure we only need like 3 ticks, but we'll be a little bit safe. Auto save. It's already a tiny bit faster. Alright. I th think that is everything. It wasn't... This is generic, so I don't have to change that. I already changed this. We didn't forget this up here. We started with it. This doesn't need to change. Um, yeah, I think it's already working. Which means... If I've set this up correctly, there might already be a ship on the way here, unless they're both on the way back. This one's on its way to Corsal Orbit, and this one's heading home. So, Iron Hauler 2. Well, it also depends on the signal ordering. Oh, also, also, I haven't set up one of these yet. Uh, let's see. Iridite. No, that's for dispatching. This is to say, uh, this crinite signal is to say that the ship at the drop-off for crinite core fragments is ready to go. Um, 43k? Uh-oh. I think we may have sent some extra signals. Myclat, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I presume it was Veldak who did that shout-out, but I can't see. Good job, Veldak, probably, or whoever. I can't think of anyone else I've modded except Damsel. Yeah, I was going to say. All right, so... Uh, it looks like... I wish I could pause it. Wait, let me look, look down here. What are we sending through? 80k. And planet orbit 683. Yes. Okay, so we must have sent that through dozens of times. Somehow. But it's not getting any bigger. So I suspect it was because we were messing around with it. Um... I think I just need to reset this memory cell. Only thing is, I don't actually want to reset the signal zero. Um, I don't suppose that ship is almost here, not even. 
Hmm. What's the easiest way to fix this? And how do we get all of those signals on the green? How did we get all of those signals on the green? I'm actually very curious about that. It says moon orbit, right? Planet orbit is blue. So I don't think this is a result of messing with the, the outpost that we're setting up right now. I think it was when I was messing with um, this part back at the first one. Yeah, it was when I was moving this around. Okay. Well... Well, well, well... Um... How about this? We're just gonna clear that memory cell. And... As long... Uh, until that ship leaves... We're going to disable this. And we're going to disable making the ship launch. Um, I'm just going to get rid of that for now. So once the ship comes here and picks up... Oh, that one's almost home as well. Uh, once our hauler here comes in and picks up core fragments and leaves, uh, we'll set those back because the count of zero ships or zero storage worth of ships on its way to that outpost will be correct and I won't have to go and like manually change it or something. Tom, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So, as far as I know, I have set up this one correctly already. Which means there's nothing left to do here. I hope. Oh, except for because I was stupid enough to land next to this uh, robot network. Make sure we don't leave, leave it with more logi bots or something. That seems fine. Oh, except, yeah, there we go. All these logi bots ended up in here. Um, a construction bot or two left back here might not be a bad thing. And this looks fine as well. Okay, let's head back to Corsal Orbit. Just in case I have something to do there. I think I do, actually. Sigma, uh, Sigma Bean, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Our Iron Hauler is almost there. Just another three minutes, actually. And, oh hey, we got rid of the used up uranium fuel cells. Because I set up the vanilla train to pick this stuff up. Uh, apparently that's not working yet. Oh, because I left this guy here. That's why. There you go. I could set this to anything greater than some larger number. I wish we had a signal that tallied up the total of all the different things in one convenient package. We could say something like, as soon as there's 50 of whatever, any number of different things, come and pick up whatever's here. 
Which, when this is working normally, is probably what we should expect. I could set this... I, I could set it fairly large. I mean, we could... We could let, like, a half a wagon pile up. Before we bother to send a train. It would be more efficient, if far less responsive. Alright, did our ship appear yet? No. Uh, 1 minute 14 seconds. Okay then. Let's jump into the editor and finish what we started someday. I think we'll put the... Uh, the junk data card pickup over... that's the wrong one. Over here. And not on this side, actually. Uh, get rid of that and that. Fantastic. It is still hot, my brain is melting, but this is not too difficult of a build. Let's... Uh, how fast do we make the junk data cards here? Less than two per second at max speed, I think we'll be fine to just do it this way. We'll just limit that to one train load. And put it in here. And that's going to be high priority pickup. Uh, no fluids this time. Actually, I guess they're all going to be high priority pickups because each of them has uh, junk fluid outputs. Uh... Uh, that's fine. That is fine. Alright. So this one is for hot stuff. Biocombustion data and also whatever the output fluid for this one was. Contaminated biosludge. Contaminated bio sludge. Make sure we tell LTN what we've got. And that's already connected. Don't need this belt. Uh, and this one here is going to be contaminated cosmic water and biomechanical data. Biomech, contaminated cosmic, fantastic, and tell LTN what we've got. Let me just put these down here. Uh, what's our max rate? Almost slightly more than four per second. Wow. I think once again, just limiting these will be enough. Is our method to balance? Wait, I thought this was going to be faster than this one. Nope. Isn't biomechanical data needed in other places? It's needed for biomechanical resistance data. One to one. What about the combustion? That only goes into bio catalog. So the fact that this is faster actually makes no sense. 
Uh, maybe I'll have a, another block where we just do this twice. This is fine for now, I think. Um, this goes here. Wait, what? Oh, it thinks we're mixing fluids when we're not because of this. Alright. How far apart are these? We could use sevens. Of course we could. That's not quite right somehow. What went wrong? Oh. Oh, it wouldn't let me place that there. Because it thinks it knows best. Okay. And then... Last... Oops. Last one. We can have a three. And I wonder if we could put this a little bit closer. Not if I do a three there. Uh, also, we kind of need space for that to connect. Why doesn't a seven... Oh, right. Also, also a seven would have trouble with this. We need lubricant. And... I make these fit together very well. Not quite. Not if I don't move this. I don't really want to move it. But that's not too bad. Uh, this needs to go here as well. One, two, three tiles. And then we can go back to sevens up here. And one, two, three tiles. Yeah, that's kind of consistent. I don't hate that. Alright, so on the opposite end, we could do it like this, or we could do it like this, depending on how things line up. Probably don't need this on this side, though. Fantastic. So, contaminated biosludge is going to be the, on the left on both sides. Unless I change it around, depending on what looks better. Oh, if for a second I thought that had to connect up the top. That's not right. That is not correct. And probably down here that we should continue with the sevens. Alright, I've had enough of that for the moment. Our ship should be on its way back. It is. And back at base, it should be parked, probably. It is. So the count on our global memory cell is zero. We can turn this back on. Outpost zero. And put that, whoops, put that back in there. And we should see our ship taking off shortly. Fantastic. Cool, cool, cool. 
and the count of how much storage worth of spaceship is on its way is 18 point something K, and we've removed all the other stuff. Which is good, because now it's not going to conflict with the data right here. Alright, so, if erudite core fragment, greater than signal 1, output everything, fantastic. Um, we've already got imasite core fragments on the memory cell though. Alright, let's go do the drop-off for erudite core fragments. Heyo, Christ of Clades, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Um, I'll leave a couple of construction bots here just in case. I would leave a regular storage chest, but it's going to fill up with core fragments. So I can't really do it that way. I guess I could leave a buffer chest that I manually configure. What science are you up to these days? Um, Energy 2, Astro 3, Mechanical 2. Back to Hagen Orbit. Turn off our auto clamp, otherwise we'll be lost forever. If the ship gets back while I'm doing the editor stuff. Um, yeah, I was thinking I should rush Energy 3, actually, because there's a lot of good stuff behind just four more data cards there. Just got into space myself. Nice. Um, that actually lines up pretty well. How about this? Oh, I can't do it that way. Um, yes I can. That's not too bad. Uh, so we need, we only need two solids. All of our input is going to the one belt in the middle. I'm pretty sure the input rate is very slow. It is. Um... If not for the underground pipe up here, which doesn't necessarily have to be here, I could do something a bit different. Well, no, I don't. I mean, I was thinking something along these lines. And then we just push the one type of item to the right container and the one type of item to the left container with filters. I think it was 